Welcome back to another episode in this series as we try to build a flight sim in Minecraft. Last time we built up all the wiring to be able to play a video on the screen, but that milestone was kind of overshadowed by a major issue we ran into. After building the prototype which allowed me to play 16 frames of video, I realized that the lag was already way too high. If we were to continue building with the lag being as bad as it is, the entire machine would basically grind to a halt pretty fast. The reason is that we need incredibly long buses to transfer all the data to the screen because we need to account for all the different positions and orientations of the airplane in a 3D space. So after playing around with it for a while, I decided that this concept just wasn't workable and I needed to get a totally different solution to this problem. So I thought, if you have a mess of wires, what better way to clean it up than just making everything wireless? And that's what we're going to try to do today. I really haven't played around with wireless tech in Minecraft much, so I think today is going to be mostly learning the ropes, figuring out how it works, and coming up with a protocol design that can support the data transfer rates we need um, without tanking the game. There's a lot of good tutorials out there on wireless redstone, so I'll just do a brief primer here. Basically, a while back, 2no2name figured out that items share a global variable to vary their initial drop rate. Here's what that looks like. I've spawned in a bunch of buttons here in the same tick, and when I start dropping them, what you'll notice is that they drop in a wave pattern that repeats every four items. So every fourth item will start dropping in the same tick. Most applications use this functionality by sending a single bit every four items, but that's not going to work for us. We need a data transfer rate of 15 times 7 times 4 times 2.5 bits per second, which works out to just over 1 kilobit per second. So we need to make our protocol as efficient as possible, and I think the way we're going to do that is by using every single item as a data carrier. There's four items that repeat, and we happen to have four colors, so I'm going to try work out a way to get each pixel represented by four items. All right, enough talking. Let me rig something up so we can see this in action. Okay, here we go. Here's my prototype. This machine looks complicated, but most of the wiring is just to distinguish pulses sent at different game ticks. Since the items drop one game tick apart, but most of the redstone components work on two game ticks, I have to do some instant wire stuff to be able to distinguish between the signals. So you can see here, as I step one tick at a time, these pistons will route the incoming signal down four different paths. But anyway, here's the basic concept. I'll dispense four items in a single game tick. There's one detector item and three fillers. And then based on which of the four spots the detector item occupies in the sequence, the machine's going to send a signal to a different piston, and we should see a different color wool extend. Using update ordering, I should then be able to define where the detector item is in the sequence by putting filler items either before or behind it and that way I should be able to send four different color options for each pixel. So that's what you see here with these dispensers. I've just set up dispensers for different combos of filler items. So based on where I send the pulse, it'll dispense filler items either before or after the detector item. This is my detector item here, and you'll notice a crystal. I use this in the similar way that I use the crystal to control the TNT height in my TNT cannon. I think this was initially discovered by Kevbotomy, um, but it essentially shortens the drop duration for a dispensed item, so it allows me to more quickly drop it through the trap door and read its drop rate. So for this machine, right now, it's set up that these three droppers drop filler items before this dropper drops the detector item based on the update ordering. So if I turn it on, we'll see the yellow will pulse, and if I route power to these droppers instead, then we should see the next color pulse, and so on.
I'm just catching the items with hoppers, but you don't have to. You can just dispense them and it'll still work, or you could even dispense them directly into lava. The item just has to travel through the air at least one block, so you can't push them from a dropper into a hopper, for example. So with this setup, you can get out of phase, and to correct that, you just do a phase shift by dispensing an item into your inventory. I could also drop an item and pick it up, it has the same effect. So the idea is that we're going to calibrate our machine after building it by getting it into phase, and then after that it should retain the calibration. So that's our protocol. And the idea now is that we just scale this whole thing up and send all the data for a row in a single game tick, and that would give us seven game ticks to update the entire screen. So that means on the eighth game tick, we can clear the screen and dispense the next frame. All right, next time we're going to build the receivers for this whole machine using this concept. So I have to get rid of all this messy redstone, make it as efficient as possible, figure out how to scale it, and so on. So that's going to be quite the challenge. Thanks a lot for watching. See you guys in the next episode.